Now we come to our guest speakers, and the first one is Nathan Willoughby, who is the nurse unit manager at Namori Evans Wing at Vanilla Health. And he's got his own journey of discovery around family violence and how I suddenly it went from, I, I know what's going on in the community to something that became very close to home. So thank you, Nathan. from this because if I don't, um, I don't know where I'll end up. Saturday night, the 28th of January 2017 is a night I will never forget. But before that, I need to take you back a bit. Now, you might look at me, this six foot eight giant of a man, and think, he'd be a tough one to go down. But you would be wrong. Growing up, I never got into fights. I'd be the one who was breaking them up. My sister had a better right hook than I did. And I was always on the right side of just being a little bit too big. Many of you know that I'm a nurse. Yes, that's right, I'm a nurse. And probably the biggest nurse you'll ever meet. Um, nursing is a natural fit for me. And as a result, my wife and I have friends from a very similar background, beliefs and careers. We see ourselves as part of a caring, compassionate and helpful community. Which led to my involvement with the peer support team at Benalla Health and subsequently the White Ribbon Association as well. At the very beginning, I struggled with violence against women being an issue for all men. That was the, the greatest challenge that I was faced with. Um, the friends that I have hold the same values, the same ideals about respect, equality and a belief in humanity. I took the oath and got to know the facts. And I would encourage every man here today, if you haven't done that already, please do so. Yet still, still, always in the back of my mind, this was seen as someone else's world. Someone else's problem, not my normal. I didn't have any mates who were threatening or violent, who would hurt the ones they loved, who would betray every vow, promise and trust in this naive world that I had surrounded myself in. So, on the night of the 27th of January 2017, it was the day after Australia Day, a Friday, it had been a warm day and an uncomfortably warm night. The fan was working overtime and my wife and I had just literally drifted off to sleep. It was about 20 past 11 when suddenly my mobile phone on the bedside table rang. As I jumped up from my fitful sleep and tried to stop the ringing from waking the kids, I saw a number that wasn't familiar to me. Who is it? My wife asked, half asleep. Annoyed and frustrated as I muted the ring, and I thought to myself, oh, bloody cold call salesman, how do they get my number and what sort of an ungodly hour in the world if they run out? On reflection, I was a bit surprised when the phone buzzed to indicate that a message had been left. And those who get these calls know the salesmen don't leave messages on your phone. Either way, I didn't think too much of it, and I rolled over and went back to sleep. The following day, I listened to that voice message. It was from a dear friend who, for the sake of anonymity, I'll call Grace. Grace lives in Brisbane with her three kids and, at the time, her husband. Grace is a vibrant, effervescent energizer bunny. A girl of the western country of Queensland who has a heart as big as the outback itself and someone that my wife and I would consider as close as a sister. 
We'd become friends with her and her husband through our work as nurses in those halcyon days after marriage and before children. I was close to Grace due to our love of orthopaedic nursing and my wife was close to her husband through their work together in the cardiothoracic surgical ward. Those days there was a group of 20 of us and we thought that we were the Brisbane version of Friends. For those that don't know, that's a 90s TV show. Grace and her husband had been together long, longest of all of us, high school sweethearts who appeared made for each other. They were close friends. I drove the bridal car for Grace's wedding, and I am the godfather of their daughter. She sounded her normal self, asking us and the kids about us, sorry, and wanting to catch up. No indication in her voice as to the trauma and the horrors that she was about to reveal. I texted her back saying that we would give her a call later that night after the kids on both sides of the line had gone to bed so we could have a good natter as it had been quite a long time since we'd last spoken as life gets busy. Later that night, Sheree and I huddled around the speaker on my phone as we connected and started, started to reminisce about the good old days and do you remember when? But something wasn't right. There was a waver in her voice this wasn't the grace that I knew. Where's my sister? I then asked about her husband, whose name I cannot mention. Grace kept deflecting the questions, quickly turning the conversation around and asking about our extended family. After 10 minutes of this, I was begging, sorry, beginning to worry and asked, is everything okay? It was then that my entire world shattered. To this day, I struggle to recount all the details of what was spoken over the next three hours. It is too horrific to disclose here. As she finally broke her silence, my wife and I felt like we'd been hit by a truck over and over and over again. We were the first that she had opened up to. I crumbled to the floor off the side of the bed. Our dear, dear friend had been traumatised beyond words by this thing that we believed was a kind and gentle soul like the rest of our friends. The call took over three hours and my phone began to run flat. Through the heart-wrenching sobs of both my wife and I and Grace we said our goodbyes and held each other until we finally fell asleep. How? When? Why? No, it can't be true. Are they safe? Did the kids see it? Can we get up there? All these thoughts swirled in a maelstrom through my, our minds. We were on an emotional roller coaster. My stomach felt like it was in a black hole. And in those moments of utter despair, it dawned upon me. This was my awakening. No longer was this someone else's reality. This was our world, my world, and it will never, never be the same again. Over the coming days and weeks and months, through persistence and support, Grace has been able to access Domestic Violence Connect Women's Line in Queensland and legal aid. Though I was a part of this wonderful White Ribbon Association through my dealings with the peer support team, I needed help navigating through the process. That's how deep the shock was. And thank you, Sally, for your guidance. The kids and Grace are slowly piecing their lives together with the love and support of friends and family, but it can never erase the black mark left on all of our souls. So my message today is to those who felt like me back at the start. Do not be so naive to think that this isn't happening in your world. Have frank and honest conversations with your mates, friends and family. Ask the tough questions when you think something isn't right. And always, always stand up, speak out and act to prevent men's violence against women. Thank you.